Okay, here we go. Uh, you can tell I'm very unenthused to do this recap of Orange County because, like I said, very uneven episode. Uh, so I have been putting it off and putting it off, but I think we finally got to dive in. Season 18, episode 8, eight uh, it is called Once a Traitor, Always a Traitor. And I, I think that means Tamara, right? That means Tamara, and I always like these kind of titles because you can almost think, oh, is production kind of trolling Tamara in this? Because everybody thought she was a traitor. Uh, the housewife's description we get from the cable company says, Emily analyzes her harsh behavior towards Jen. That's all we get. We get one sentence to tell what this episode is about. And maybe, maybe this episode was so kind of blah that that's the only thing, but man, you come on a couple sentences. Like if I never watch orange County in my life and I, this comes on and I'm like, Hey, should we get into this show? And then I go to the description. I'm like, who's Emily? Like, what is this even about? I would go like uh, a has been has come on to host a, uh, a C level uh, version of the trade <laughs> C level version of the traders. Okay. So we start off with a bang. We don't do any uh, housewives taglines in this. They barely show us scenes from previous episodes. And instead, they start right into the episode and then they kind of flash back to a bunch of episodes. This is the point of the season, like I said last episode, where we're starting to get way too many flashbacks way too many flashbacks and they're not using the flashbacks effectively because at this point i feel like you could completely troll alexis and tamra and you're not doing it i think i don't know if that's the kindness of their hearts but i feel like you are not like they're they're trolling shannon all the time we do get tamra screaming in a bunch of things but i want if you're gonna do a flashback give us some meat you know you got such a rich history to cherry pick from and i sometimes wish like man let's get into it a little bit more especially if you're watching on peacock make these extended i mean not this episode but normally um so we start off at this palanique restaurant and we have emily heather and tamra meeting up for drinks and i will say emily has another what looks to be an espresso martini Emily is going hard on espresso martinis this season. It's her drink of choice. Every episode, there's an espresso martini. And a couple episodes ago, when she got in Jen Pedronti's face and of like, you're such a fucking idiot. Espresso martini night. At the Traders event, espresso martini. In this scene, espresso martini. I mean, when you got your drink, I mean, you stick with it. Isn't it great back in the day when you started like having your first drink and like, it would be like wine coolers back in the day, or uh, it was like that, like whiskey sours. It was like everything that you could do to convince yourself that you were not drinking alcohol because back then it tasted gross. And then as you progress, this is so dark as you progress in drinking, you just get, it gets harder and harder where you're like, eventually you're like, yeah, straight vodka. Let's do it. Yeah. Whiskey. Yeah. Scotch. Let's do that. Yeah. I don't need any of the frilly bullshit. Okay. So they're meeting for, they're meeting, and this is after there's two separate cast like trips, you know, Big Bear and La Quinta. Um, and Tamara is like, How was your trip, ladies? How was it? Tamara just on a fact finding mission, we can only assume. And Heather's like, It was good. And Emily goes, Well, I felt like Shannon was on the verge of like a mental breakdown. And Heather goes, Me too. And then we flash back to Shannon from last week's episode where she's bawling in La Quinta. And she's like, I don't understand how overwhelmed I am with love right now. I don't deserve it. And she's sobbing into Emily's shoulder. This Shannon, we must protect her at all costs, please. And then Heather goes, and then you called us to tell Shannon you wanted to meet with her. I didn't realize that was happening imminently, imminently, imminently. Um, which, by the way, that was where we ended last week's episode with this tete-a-tete -tete of Shannon and Tamara having uh, a dinner. And I got to tell you, Shannon held her own. You could tell Tamara was on her heels because at one point Shannon was like, this is too crazy. I'm going to get up and I'm going to catch my breath. I need my purse and I'm just going to walk away. And Tamara is not used to that. She's used to people walking away with like screaming and yelling. But to somebody quietly doing that, that's power. Like that is like when somebody when somebody is just in their moment in their power and they're not acting out of anger um people don't know what to do with that because tamra's used to interacting with people that she can bait immediately and they fall for it now the scene ended kind of weird because 
Tamara like invited her and Vicky to her little, little traders party, which I mean, I think she kind of had to just to play the game of traders. But Shannon was like, oh, my God, can I have a hug? And I was like, don't do it. This is a trap, Shannon. Do not do it. Anyways. You know, we, we see one clip of Shannon, you know, kind of defending herself going, do you know how off the rails you were the other night at Gina's dinner? And we flash back to Gina's dinner where Tamara, and I will say this as well, you guys, listen, I am, I am claiming my time with this podcast. I'm just going to say everything is that Tamara was on watch what happens live a couple weeks ago, right? She always does good on that show. But they were asking about her drinking and she's like, well, I don't, I don't really drink. You know, I do my, my CBD and I do, you know, cause she has that company, but I, I don't really drink, you know, I, I'm, it's just not a part of my life. Well, it seems to be a part of her life when she's on the housewife show, because in this scene at Gina's, she seemed lit at the traders event later this episode, she seems lit, like very, very lit. And it is interesting how I feel like history is getting rewritten a little bit because Trace Amigas, which I always just love, like they treat it like it's the fucking Beatles or something. And like the Beatles need to continue. And it's like, it's cute, but like, come on, like I, I'm, I'm good. Um, but Trace Amigas was basically these ladies like pounding shots on stage. That was always my visualization of it. And, she, you know, Tamara was fully involved in all of that. It wasn't like she was the teetoler. Like she was like, I'm straight edge. No, she was like fully involved in the drinking. But now she's re like, I don't I don't I don't abuse alcohol that way. And I do agree that Shannon has abused alcohol. I do agree with that. And I I fully believe that in the height of her misery, that she would drink and call people and complain and woe is me. Like a lot of us have done. And I, it probably was kind of annoying for some people to handle or to deal with. And that person seems to be Tamara. But it is interesting to rewrite things of like, because when I'm watching this show and all we have to go by is the show, it looks like Tamara's the one that likes to drink, you know? But anyways, that Gina episode, we have that flashback where Tamara's going, you had to pay everything for John, you said. You owe him $75,000. And then a uh, uh, fun Lexi jumps in, goes, oh, for what? A facelift in a loan. And then back to that scene last week, Tamara, already knowing that John Jansen is suing Shannon, Tamara goes, is he suing you, Shannon? And Shannon's like, yeah, he is. And Tamara goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is the kind of thing that kills me as a viewer because this is like the height of being two-faced to me is the I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what is real. Is Tamara really sorry or is she sorry in this scene because of how it's going to play and she'll be able to pull Shannon back in, in a sense, because so far the plan isn't fully working. She's had two housewives at this point saying, yo, you need to like rethink how you're handling this Shannon situation. Or is it some part of like another ultimate plan? I do think Shannon, I sorry, I do think Tamara goes in with an agenda on seasons. I do, I mean, she's that, archetype housewife that comes in with a plan. And, uh, you know, that's the unfortunate thing though, is that in these scenes when she's apologizing, like, Oh, I'm so sorry, Shannon, Shannon. And usually the people that she's in a scene with really believe it. And I think Tamara has such a long reputation on housewives where all of these housewives, it's not that they don't want to mess with her, but they want to be on Tamara's side because Tamara always projects that she knows what she's doing. Like, ah, I've been in this business for a minute. I got this. And, you know, I mean, she came back on TV, what, last season? And within five episodes, I felt like she was like the head of the gang. I mean, she came in really rocky. She had really sloppy moments on the boat with alcohol and then at that sushi restaurant with alcohol. But then after that, it was like the other ladies kind of like woke up out of a deep slumber from filming for a couple of seasons and says, oh, shit, we're playing an actual game. Like, I, we got to step up. But Tamara at that point, like she was the strongest one. You know, she knows what she's trying to do. And I feel like a lot of these other ladies are sometimes just wandering around in the desert, just bumping into things. So it kind of gives it a focus that it didn't have before. Um, but like I said, it's a sloppy focus. So we uh, we end that scene with her getting invited to the traders party. And, you know, Tamara's regaling to the ladies goes, I told Shannon I'm having a party on Wednesday. I want you and Vicky to be there. Alexis will not be invited. Alexis will not be invited. Um, 
but like I said earlier about Alexis, like doesn't doesn't matter that Alexis is not invited. She already is ruling the the airwaves and the the media of talking about the John Jensen. So it's like she was on the show. It's like she was there without being there. We flash back to Tamara in a car talking, going, I had so much fun at Traders. I was thinking of hosting a competition party with you girls. And Alexis is like, does it involve Shannon? And Tamara's like, oh, Jesus. And then back in this scene with Emily and Heather, Tamara goes, they should not be together. It's just too volatile right now. It is just, it is just too volatile right now. It is just, this is what I'm talking about later on when we see her to say, Shannon saying, oh, Alexis just worries about you so much. Bullshit. And you know, it's bullshit. Shit. And I love Tamara. Like it's so volatile right now. It's volatile because you keep stoking that fire. That's what you do. You stoke the fire with the paparazzi photographs with Katie Janela and Gina and Heather, and you're stoking the fire with this. So that's the funny thing she does. She drops these little bombs and then she comments on it. Like she has nothing to do with it. Like I, you know, from what I see, the situation is just so volatile and I just don't even know how it got that way. It's like, well, yeah, you do. You got it that way. Ah, anyways, we flash back to the big bear cabin and Alexis is talking about Shannon going, I want her to shut up. Do I need to pull out the videos? Johnny's ready to talk. Johnny's ready. Like it's not a fucking FBI informant. Oh, we've convinced him to talk. He's ready to spill. Who cares? I do not care about John Jansen spilling anything like let him spill his demon seed with you off camera. I don't care at all. And Jen Pedronti in the scene is like, oh, videos of what? And Tamara immediately answers because she already knows. She's already got this information. Tamara goes, her, her, her the night of her DUI. And then we flash back uh, or flash forward to Big Bear last week where they were leaving the uh, Big Bear cabin. And Lexi, you know, just weirdly enough, got a phone call to John Jansen and then started to do a performance of a lifetime and talking to Katie and Katie was just like, I'm a first season. Why is this? So uh, this seems really intense. And she's like, Katie, I'm telling you, it will ruin Shannon's life. It will ruin her life. And then remember she threw herself down on the bed and she was like, oh, I hate her so much. Back in this scene, Tamara telling the ladies going, I don't think we should mention this to Shannon at all. And Heather's like, no way. Mm -mm. which sounds like the end of the Southern charm. Mm -hmm. Oh, these, Tamara's going to drive me to an early grave. My God, Tamara. That's the other thing too about traders. You guys, it's just like, I love my experience on the traders. It's like, girl, you got kicked off really quickly in that, you know, but Tamara is another one of the, like, she's really good at, I'm trying to give compliments. She's really good at identifying other things that people like, and then making herself a part of it. Like, you know, like, Oh, I, I'm going to talk all about it. Like, this is, this is my game now. Like, am I the only one that gets that vibe? But I think that's also a gift is being able to identify what people are paying attention to and then kind of co-opt that. It's like how Lisa Renna used to do with other people's storylines. And Tamara does that a little bit as well, but she's able to do it with a bunch of other things. And that's truly a talent, no matter how you look at it. The first 30 minutes of this episode is just, it, it moves slow like molasses. It's like, I, you know, the last half is the traders. And then this first one is some kind of deep conversations and things, but it just feels so disjointed. So we start off with Shannon and she's at this like automotive place. I'm like, Oh, what, what's hey, what's Shannon? Is Shannon, uh, she getting a, she getting a forerunner. What's going on? But Shannon lets us know. She goes, since my DUI, I purchased a new car. And we flash back to her getting a, a car with Emily Simpson. I where, What happens to the rest of these scenes? We always see like one minute of a scene and you're like, God, you went out and shot for a whole day. Where's the footage? Like, I want to see Shannon Bedore testing out cars, like sitting in the car seat, Emily commenting on the cars. Like, where's all of that footage? Anyways, Shannon uh, immediately over sharing with the uh, the automotive dealer in this flashback goes, I had a 750 BMW, but it got totaled. Like Shannon always just like, I ran into a house drunk. So I'm going, I'm in the market for a new car. It got, you know, and Emily says, hey, we're going to go to the sensible mature lady car section. And then we have Shannon like, posing on like her BMW with like a red bow. And Emily's like, you look a little stiff, like get a little, 
Yeah, get a little like that. Like, come on, come on, Shannon. And she like lays on her back on the car. I'm like, hell yeah. Let's see after dark, Shannon Bedore. Yeah, like Shannon B is here to please. Only fan Shannon Bedore. Let's make a little pocket money. Let's get John his facelift money back by sending erotic photos. <laughs> Shannon, Shannon posing on just different cars. You know, she's all oiled up. It's like Shannon on a Harley Shannon on a Corolla, just a bunch of different things. Like, come on, I would sign up for that OnlyFans without a doubt. Anyways, anything Shannon does is like a Lucy sketch. Like, I love Lucy. It's just, she's a, I, and I truly believe this is natural and how she really is. But everything is just physical comedy. Shannon lets us know in a talking head, she's like, when you have your license suspended for six months, oh, you know, the option is you can have your license suspended for six months, or you can drive with a breathalyzer installed in the car. And we flash back to the lawyer and the lawyer's explaining going, if you install that in your car, then you're allowed to drive your car anywhere you want, Shannon. In the uh, talking head, Shannon continues, because my children are at school, they can't really drive me around. And I want to be able to have the ability. And second of all, I think it's good for me to be reminded of my very, very stupid choice. Now, she says these things in a perfect way. Like, that's the right thing and the right attitude to have of like, yeah, I've got to remind myself of my stupid choice. Like the wording of that is dead on because it was her choice and she is reminding people of that. I mean, you have Tamara reminding her of that all the time as well. I mean, Tamara is like her car breathalyzer just in human form. But I like that Shannon's like, no, I'm going to face this. Now, me personally, I would be like, Uber's your best friend at this point. Like six months, come on. Six months goes like that. Where are you? I mean, what are you doing? Thelma and Louise road trips? Come on. You don't, I mean, but whatever. Have the freedom to do it. But she's going to get this breathalyzer installed. So we have this guy, Christian, that works at the, the store. This guy, this, this kid's a star. He's like, hi, I'm Christian. I, uh, I work with Ignition Interlocks. Um, we can go into the car and do a quick training. Uh, I'll have you uh, hop in the... Uh, Hop in the driver's side. And Shannon's like, I haven't been in the driver's side of a car in six months because I totaled my BMW when I ran into a house. She didn't say that last line, but that, that's the vibe. And uh, first off, I was thinking Christian. I was like, this guy, young kid. But I'm like, maybe Shannon can find love with Christian. I'm like, are you feeling this, Christian? Do you feel the heat between us right now? But Shannon is too demure and too you know, polite and with manners to ever come on to a guy like Christian like that. But I just, I want that for Shannon. Remember back in the day in Beverly Hill, it was last season when Sutton like randomly admitted she made out with her driver a couple of times. She was like, I'll say, I'll say, yeah, I'm, I'm, well, he's a driver and we made out. I'm like, what the fuck? You have a private driver that you said, like, I don't know about HR at like Sutton Concepts, but it seems like that's pretty, I still think about that. I'm like, how did that even fucking happen? And then every time she was driven to an event, I was like, is that the dude that like, made that? is that the dude of like, oh shit, I got to drive Sutton around today. She's going to want to make out at the end of the car ride of like, well, I'll say, are you going to come in? You going to need an invite? Come on in. We're going to make out. Anyway, Shannon is letting Steve know. She's like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be nervous to drive. I got to be honest. I am. And this guy, Steve, who I think works with Shannon is with her. And is like, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And Christian is like, it, it happens to a lot of people, you know, with the running into the house. And Steve's like, it's like riding a bike. Christian goes, you want to do this before you start the vehicle, because if you do start the vehicle, it's going to count as a violation and you don't want any violations. And Shannon's already like, OK, oh, no. Oh, here we go. So basically, you have to blow into this thing so it'll give you your accurate breathalyzer reading. And by the way, like, I feel like it would be a violation if you just drank anything at this point and drove a car. Like, I mean, I don't know what the cutoff is, but this Christian, he has so much wisdom. He's like, the way you blow into this. It's almost like meditating. You're going to, hmm, it's going to be a hum and a blow. And I'm like, are we talking about starting the car here? What are we doing here? Like, what, what are we, Christian, what are we talking about here? It's a hum and a blow. And Shannon's like, oh, okay, a hum and a blow. Mm, okay, okay. Oh, I get it. And she picks it up and she's blowing in it. But she's not humming, folks. She's only blowing. And Christian is like humming along. He's like, hmm. And we get a beep, beep, beep. And Christian's like, stop. Yeah, so you did it wrong. And she's like, why did I do it wrong, Christian? Why Everything, I mean, what, are you going to bring up John Jansen next? 
And Christian's like, you didn't hum, Shan. And you needed to hum. And she's like, oh, okay, you got you got to hum. I know you got to hum. I how uh, uh, and and Christian's humming, Steve's humming. They're all like Shannon, hum along with us. I thought this was about to break into a musical number of like, hmm, 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 hmm. my name's Shannon Bedore, and I'm got a car. I'm driving down the highway looking for bars. I got a car. Uh, 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 uh. I got a car. Uh, 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 uh. You better tell John Jansen to get really far, cause Shannon's got a car. Hum and blow. But Shannon keeps going, how do you do that and breathe? And Steve and Christian keep showing. And Christian goes, what I do, Shannon? You know, how when you take a deep breath. And now Shannon's coughing. She's she's like coughing in a car. I'm like, God, are we still, are we, how are we doing with COVID in the OC lately? And Christian goes, you're, you're humming. And then when you're about to release, just focus on the hum. And now Shannon does it again. And Shannon did it. He goes, stop. That was perfect. It was the best breathalyzing I've ever seen in my life. And I, I was just like, this is this is art. And Shannon goes, okay, I figured it out. Instead of going, oh, you go, oh. And I, listen, in a old Ryan would have made a meme of the, oh, oh but I'm classier now. I'm I'm so much more mature that I don't. So Shannon is letting us know it's the lower part that it satisf satisfies the hum component. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it does. Yeah. So back in the scene, she's like, does it ever like when you're driving, does it ever say pull over now? And Christian's like, no, no, it never stops on you. It will ask you for a retest. And she's like, oh, it will. Oh yeah. Every five to 20 minutes randomly. And she's like, so I do have to keep blowing when I'm driving. And Christian's like, well, yeah, while you're driving, I will say, doesn't that seem wildly dangerous? So the person with this alcohol issue that, that has the breathalyzer, they get the breathalyzer to start the car. And then like five minutes into the drive, it's like retest. Like that seems wildly dangerous because I just worry for poor Shannon that she's going to try to blow as the car is still driving. It's like, woo, and then forgetting to hum. It just seems like so much. Like he doesn't even say, Hey, maybe pull over and then blow. Like you got to retest every five to 20 minutes. Wow. But anytime she doesn't, it counts as a violation, you guys. And Shannon's like, Oh my God. And he goes after three violations. You got to come back, pay the shop a fee to reset it. And this guy's with her. He's like, one hurl after another, Shannon. Shannon lets us know in a talking head that the DUI has affected every aspect of my life, including my real for real business. Sales were starting to go down before the DUI, and it's at the same level. And remember, she had that whole business she had been working on. I mean, by the way, did she also lose her ship station sponsorship? Remember, she's like, I'm Shannon Bedore for ship station. Like, I mean, I, you really feel for her, but she's like, listen, this is the consequences of my actions. We do a flashback to a scene with her business partner and he's explaining to her, he goes, the last couple of months, for obvious reasons, we really haven't been able to help promote the product. And Shannon goes, I want to take my name off of it. You know, you know, I had a DUI, so I wasn't comfortable trying to promote it. It's hypocritical for me to say, oh, I'm healthy Shannon and buy my healthy products when I got a DUI. So my whole life, has changed, she says. I mean, that is so, it does, like when you make really horrible mistakes, your life does change. But I love the fact that she is like continuing, that she has picked herself up. She's facing the consequences. Listen, I hope she goes back to selling that. Remember when she was doing the food stuff with the salmon and the cream cheese, where I was like, oh, cream cheese on salmon. That's interesting. Like, I mean, maybe we can get her to do some unhealthy products just to get some money in the bank, right? So Christian in this scene goes, okay, you never want to disconnect this. That's another violation. You almost did that. And she's like, are you kidding? Would I have been violated? He goes, violations. Yeah. I was like, what about Christian violating her? Right. You know what I'm saying? By the way, Shannon Bador will be filming Love Hotel. I think it's in Cabo with Countess Luann, Ashley Darby, and Giselle, where it's like a Love Island USA dating show. And this is like, I just want Shannon to go in there like gangbusters because you're going up with somebody like Luann. She is a seasoned pro when it comes to dating dudes. This Shannon, I mean, just like the, I just imagine all of the awkwardness. And I just, I, I know this is what I love. I feel like, and we talked about this on an earlier episode this week, how they given the Vanderpump Rules kids, like all these kind of little side gigs through NBC Universal, you know, Ariana, Love uh, Island USA, 
Um, you have uh, Schwartz. He's like doing a couple episodes of Summer House. You have uh, a couple of like Sheena and Lala on the Valley. So it's like they're keeping them in the fold because they're like, hey, we we still want to work with you and we want you to keep you know getting money. And I figure that's another thing with Shannon. It's like, hey, we're gonna pummel you this season, but we're gonna give you this love hotel where you're probably gonna make a fool of yourself as well. But at least it's some money in the bank. So you know, at least they're not having a like like that would be horrible. They have Alexis Bellino in the uh, love hotel as well, and Shannon's like, I thought you were with John. And she's like, I am, but I'm here just to torment you the tamra's coming tomorrow <laughs> i just feel like i mean have you sorry to keep going off on this but it's like shanna's not the one talking about john jansen it's alexis and tamra that are talking about john jansen shannon's talking about breathalyzers and humming and humming and moaning and things like that she's trying to move on with her life and hum anyways we get out of that scene we get some upbeat pop music some shots of the oc and we are now in the home of Katie Janella and Jen Padronti and Jen Padronti. Remember she is a yoga teacher and she is walking Katie through some warrior poses and, you know, just kind of getting her, getting her active. And Jen's like, have you ever done yoga? And Katie's like a long time ago. Uh, and Katie, you know, Jen's like, you have great posture. Can I borrow $50,000? No, she's like, you have great posture. And so now we're seeing some downward dogs, all this shit. And Katie's like, well, that feels good. And Jen's like, working out does feel good. I'm like, Jen, no, it doesn't. Don't be a liar. And so they're like, you know, press your hips back, feel grounded to the mat. And they're doing like that, that grounded, like laying over pose. And Katie's like, I feel like that's a pose for Matt. And Jen's like, why? And Katie's like, for later. And I was like, I don't need to think about Katie and Matt doing the hippity dippity. Like what? It's too much. Anyways, Jen's like head down, shut up. Just be quiet right now. Katie says, I feel like both yoga and sex require a lot of flexibility. Jen in a talking head says, I think Katie may get down with her mat on a regular basis. And then Katie in her talking head says, when you have a husband that looks like Matt, you have sex twice a day. Listen, I don't know you ladies and guys, you know, they can tell me I'm, you know, Matt seems like a decent looking guy, but it's not like, fuck, how are you not, not fucking that dude every chance you get? Like, he looks like he's just like a handsome dude, but I love, I love Katie going, hey, you have a piece of meat, you have a piece of man meat like this? How are you not bumping uglies all the time? Come on, you gotta have sex twice a day. It's a sin not to. Jen and her talking head keeps going with the sexual stuff going. I think her mat is well used. All I was waiting was for a Tamara talking head to be like, penis and vagina, but yeah. Anyways, now they're after the yoga. They always do that, the housewife trope where they, you know, do some activity, right? And then now they're sitting after the activity. And this is where they have a real conversation. And Jen's like, how are you doing, Katie? How are you doing? And Katie's like, well, I'm taking this all in still. She says, after Big Brother, after, after Big Brother, she says, after Big Bear, I sent Heather Dubro a text. Because remember, Heather Dubro is still furious about the paparazzi allegations. So she sent her a text. She didn't respond. And Jen's like, she didn't respond? And Katie's like, yeah, it was over a week ago. And she was complaining, oh, Katie didn't send me a text. We flash back to a uh, facial day for Heather Dubro and Gina and Jen Pedranti, where Heather was complaining, going, Katie contacted the paparazzi to ask if I call media. And Gina's like, oh, I hope that she regrets it. And uh, Heather goes, there has been no text. And Katie in this scene goes, I did text her. And then crickets. Katie in a talking head goes, I actually can't believe that we're still discussing this. She just wants me to like beg on my hands and knees and be like, Princess Heather, can you please forgive me? I'm not doing that. I'm not going to kiss your ass, Heather. I'm not Gina. That was a good read. That was good. A throwing in a little Gina slam right there. Now let's go, you know, Katie's a new housewife, right? But I want to point out some, you know, her saying in this talking head going, why are we still even talking about this? You know, everybody was putting on like, oh, she keeps bringing up this paparazzi thing. Once again, it's like John Jansen. Katie's not the one that keeps on bringing it up. It's the other people. And who is that common denominator? Well, one could say Tamara. Like, they, you know, Katie's like, why are we still even talking about this? Katie, welcome to the Real Housewives of Orange County. That's what we do here. We drive things into the fucking ground. 
But I do like that. I do like, and I also worry about that talking head of like, I'm not going to bow down to Princess Heather. No way. And it's like, yeah, I love that attitude. Let's keep a little bit of that. But you got to, your first season, you got to mend. You have to mend. And Katie tries to later in this episode, but that's very important. You can't be a brick wall your first season. You got to take a lot of hits. And I think Katie's taking her first big one. But Katie tells Jen, if she wants to talk, great. If she doesn't want to talk, great. It's not like it's necessary for me. I'm fucking my husband 10 times a day. And Jen's like, well, I get that. And then we hear this like big car engine rumbling. Actually, sorry, they're at Jen's house. Not, okay, I miss, they're at Jen Pedronti's house. And this engine revs. And Katie's like, your child has that Mustang? And Jen's like, yeah, it's really cool for Dawson. Yeah. And Katie's like, is he okay? And Jen's like, you know how it is, you know, just ending a marriage, going through a divorce, building a new life. It's a big learning curve. And Katie's like, it is. And Jen's like, and you and your ex are kind of like, Katie's like, we don't talk. And uh, Jen goes, what happened? If you don't mind me asking. Jen's really like, Jen is the reverse of Tamara is that she gets good information out of her co-stars, but she does it in a very kind, inquisitive way. And it shows that you can get a lot of information with sugar. You don't need to completely pour acid on everything like Tamara does. So I think it's, I really like Jen Pedronti. Like I'm telling you, I really like the cast this season. So Katie starts sharing her story of her first marriage, says we got married when I was freshly 21. And Katie goes, oh, babies. And she's like, yeah, I had a 14 month old baby at our wedding. And I was at 21. I thought that was love, right? You have a baby with somebody, you get married. In a talking head, she says, two days before my wedding in Hawaii, my brother-in-law said to me, good luck with him. Woo! And I had already been thinking, like, this isn't right. So before I walked down the aisle, I told my dad, I just don't think I can do it. And he was like, well, you have a daughter. We flew all the way here. You got to do it. Oh, man, that's brutal advice from your dad. You know, like, sorry, you're locked in. There's a tractor beam right now. Anyways, Katie keeps going. We had another child and another child, and it became really stressful. And we started fighting about that. And Jen goes, who left who? This is my concern for you. Who left who, Katie? And Katie goes, I did. I left a bunch of times. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. And then finally, I stayed gone. In a talking head, Katie says, even going through a divorce, they encouraged me so many times to go back to my husband because good Catholic girls don't get divorced. Jen goes, your divorce was like easy. And she's like, no, it was not easy. I was like left in the cold. I didn't have any of my things, like all of my yearbooks, my scrapbooks I made as a kid, baby things. I have nothing. He got rid of everything of mine. That's fucking like, that's dark. And that's like a special place in hell kind of vibe, you know, where you're like, dude, I know that things aren't working out with you, but you don't throw away somebody's past. You just don't do that. I mean, that's a very dark anger. And Jen seems very shocked as well. Like, oh my God, if my Ryan ever did that. But Jen keeps going, what is the dynamic with Matt and the kids, Katie? Like, is he stepdad? Is he dad? And Katie goes, Matt is dad. And Jen goes, Matt is dad. Interesting. And she goes, yeah, to, to Kaylee and Gavin, my two olders. When my ex-husband and I separated, it affected all the kids, she says. I remember my son, Max, saying for so long, I wish you and dad were still married. And am I heartbroken? He's in Atlanta choosing to live with his dad. A thousand percent. But that's what sometimes happens in these custody battles, which is kind of very similar to a certain situation with Tamara and her ex, right? Um, and Tamara kind of speaks about that briefly in this episode. She continues, I mean, Kaylee's in the process of changing, Kylie's in the process of changing her name to Janella. And she said, Oh, she is? Yeah. She said, using the word dad is traumatizing. So I say Padre. And just the other day, he walked in. She was on the phone and she goes, hi, dad. And Matt like burst into tears. Like, oh my God, that's so special. You know, they're very, very close. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of amazing. There's no, I mean, you, like, that's nice. That, that really is kind of a, that's a beautiful thing when you're like blending families and kids start actually trusting the, you know, their parents' new partner. That is a beautiful thing. And, and thankfully, Matt was there to hear it because he's so busy getting ripped to shreds with sex with this Katie who just can't keep his keep her hands off him. Uh, Jen says in a talking head to hear Katie went through something similar with her kids moving in and blending their families. And she came out ahead and thriving means the world to me. And I hope in my time, my family will find our balance. 
I think it's going to be a minute. Uh, just from the Ryan stuff I heard, it might be a minute before they find the balance, but hopefully you'll find it. You seem like a great person. So Jen's like, well, Katie, I didn't know that. That is really cool. And Katie's like, yeah, he's awesome. Okay, so we get out of that scene and I'm like, okay, that was a little bit of a, that was kind of a heavy scene with some heavy information. Are we going to have like a goofy scene? Yeah, we sure are because Emily Simpson She's getting an old spray tan and she's brought along old Shane, Shaney Simpson, who loves to drink out of a thirst buster right along with her because Shane is going to get a body tan. So they're setting up this tan outside in the natural lights. And Emily's like, should I put the pasties on? I feel like the uh, I feel like it's a little too Vegasy. Like, you know, I'm going to be in a show later. And then Shane walks out and she's like, what are you doing out here? And. The lady's like, are you ready for your spray tan? The the spray tan operator? And Shane's like, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to spray tan Emily. And the operator's like, do you want to, me to show you how to spray tan? And he's like, no, just give me the gun. Yeah, Shane knows. She, fuck, Shane can, Shane, Shane's been around the block. This man knows how to spray tan a body. Come on. It's like paying a fence. So the lady's like, Shane, you're going to have to change. You don't want to get this spray tan on your jacket. Because he's got like a nice like jean jacket, like denim, a nice denim jacket on. And Emily lets us know that she doesn't like the actual spray tan part. It's gross. Now, Shane even has a prop like Tamara does a lot. It's like real men spray tan. But Emily loves the results because when you work out a lot, like Emily, you lift weights, you get a spray tan, and you can actually see your muscle tone. And then we see em Emily, man, looking great, but very comfortable with her body, doing something that I would never do. Literally opens the robe. She has like X's over her nipples. Um, her, you know, her nipples, uh, as we say, um, nobody says that. And she just rips open and Shane's like, oh, zoinks. Okay, let's do this. And so then we're like, Emily, do this, raise your hands up. And Shane is, sp Shane is spray tanning. And then there's a shot. I shit you not guys with Emily just bent over with her butt, her butt. I mean, like, it looks great. Good job, Emily. Like, honestly, amazing. But I also like, if I had kids, I wouldn't let them watch this. Like this is, it's too much. It's like, ho. Oh! and then Shane's like, well, I got a little bit more than I bargained for here. And, and Shane's like, you've been, you've been uh, naked for quite a while out here. I think the HOA is going to call. And then Shane finally, uh, he, she starts spraying Shane's face with spray tan. And she's like, I got to get your bald spot. So it matches your face. Hell yeah. Let's, let's, let's spray tan that bald spot, Shane. Um, so the spray tan lady goes to use their restroom. And that's usually when we like, you know, we've noticed before is that that's when we get the scene. Like, you know, the spray tan operator's like, well, I'm going to go take a dump. Uh, I'll leave you kids alone. And then we have this serious conversation where Emily's like, have you made a doctor's appointment? I'm like, Emily, slow down. I just saw, saw your nipples in your butt. Like, where, why are we going to a doctor's appointment all of a sudden? And Shane's like, you know, uh, you know, he's just kind of laughing. And Emily's like, no, seriously, like you had a heart attack the other day. You said you had a pain in your chest. I'm just concerned because I don't want to be a widow. And he's like, no, that was, that was you being mean and you hurt my heart. <laughs> and he laughs. He's like, that's what it was. And he goes, no, I wasn't even home, Shane. And in talking to that, she says, I don't think Shane takes his health seriously. Hell yeah. That's a man after my own heart. Hell yeah. She, uh, Emily goes, but I can only ask so many times. Then it's like, I'm nagging and I'm annoying. And then I have to be aggressive and mean. Emily tells Shane going, I don't think I'm a mean person. Would you say I'm a mean person? And Shane goes, no. Emily goes in La Quinta at dinner one night. It was just Shannon and me sitting there. And then she was like, oh, I just wanted to tell you that Gina has been saying things about you. And we flash back to that scene where Shannon goes, Gina thought you were becoming more aggressive as you hang out with Tamara or meaner. Emily tells Shane, it goes, and then I asked, cause I was trying to nail down a timeline. I said, well, did she say it after I yelled at Jen? And Shane goes, well, that's not okay. It was not okay, Shane. And I need to apologize. I just think it's like, I feel like her personality, Jen's personality, is just kind of a lack of accountability. And it just reminds me of my mom. And then, you know, how I feel about that, that personality type, that whole, and Shane's like triggers you. And she's like, yeah. I mean, my mom didn't finish college and she blames it on other people. Shane's like, yeah, but that's always going to be the case. It's never going to change. Emily says in a talking head, it was just so hard as a kid because I almost always had to get myself up, always had to get myself to school. I never had lunch money. I never had a lunch. But then I'm the person I am today 
because of what I went through. I was never coddled or given anything. By the way, this is amazing. Like, I know this is like a slow start, but like these kind of things, it really shows you. It's like we all have reasons why we are the way we are. And you think about little Emily, little Emily Simpson having to do everything for herself. And that must have been tragic. And you can see how she carries it on her shoulders every day of her life. But at the same time, it's why she's a good wife, why she's a good mother, you know, uh, all of these things. And also why she gets so angry at people like Jen that she feels has just had things handed to her and is not actually picking up the ball and teaching herself how to play with it. Right. So Emily tells Shane, I recognize that that's not Jen's fault, right? That's my issue. And she starts tearing up. She's like, I feel badly that she was on the receiving end of it. I know that's a problem that I need to work on. In a talking head, she goes, yes, I'm aggressive or mean. But I had to be. I had to be that way, she says. Because as a kid, you shouldn't have to figure all that stuff out. In the scene, Emily goes, I don't want Annabelle to ever. And Shane goes, well, that that's the thing, right? Break the cycle, right? Right? And Emily goes, I go into Annabelle's room at night and she just throws things. No, I go into Annabelle's room at night and I hug her and tell her how much I love her. I think she and I have a strong, solid relationship. And Shane's like, that's good. And then she goes, Shane, do you think I'm a good mom? And he goes, yeah. Which, And then Shane hugs her. And I was like, oh my God, Shane, please don't say, please don't say a dad joke. Please don't say a Shane joke because I was waiting for her like, yeah. <laughs> Well, you can put some clothes on from your naked body after spray tanning, but he just hugs her. And I'm telling you, this is why this, I think this relationship is going to be a forever relationship. It, you know, like she was talking openly and honestly, he was receiving it. He hugged her at the end. This is good communication, right? It might not be the most exciting, but it's a solid relationship. And I think that's like the best thing that you can hope for. Now we hop on over to Tamara's second house, the second house that Hate built, and she is going, Sophia, my daughter Sophia, do you want to do something? And Sophia goes, sure, sure. Like Sophia, by the way, I just rewatched Beetlejuice the other day to prepare for the sequel, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And I got to tell you, Sophia has given some major Lydia Dietz uh, homage here. I mean, it's very Lydia Dietz of like, yes, uh, Darkness, darkness everywhere. And Tamara's like, do you want to go on? Do you want to go drive? And she's like, not particularly. No. Well, what makes you nervous about it? Well, I'm afraid that you're just going to talk shit about Shannon Bedore and John Jansen the whole time. Oh, no. No, anyway, she's like, well, you know, Sophia says you go fast. Accidents happen. People die. And Tamara, like, it is such a contrast because, you know, Sophia's all in muted colors. You know, she's kind of a badass. And Tamara's all bright. And she's like, let's go driving. Woo! We'll potentially kill people. And by the way, shout out to Tamara for not actually making a Shannon Bedore joke here. Because I was waiting for after uh, Sophia said accidents happen. I'm like, I'm not going to run into a house. <laughs> but she didn't. And that's called growth. Tamara goes, oh, you are crazy. You are, you, you have to be such a pain in my ass. The cameras are here. I'm being loving. And she's like, let's go. Sophia goes like, let's go. And Sophia's going to drive. And Tamara's like, do I need a hel helmet? And Sophia's like, only if you drive us off a bridge. <laughs> Anyways, they, they get in the car and Sophia's driving. Tamara's already going, you didn't look coming out of the driveway. She's like, I usually back up a little bit. And then I look. Anyway, they're just fighting over normal car stuff. It's a normal thing. Driving with your parents, learning how to drive. Tamara's teaching her how to drive the whole, the whole business. So we get out on the open road and Tamara goes, I got a message at Saddleback school. Um, and Sophia goes, well, I applied. And Tamara's like, to do what? And she's like, graphic design. And Tamara's like, well, that's good. I'm shocked that Tamara, is Tamara really finding this out on a car ride with the cameras up? And then Tamara goes, well, what about music school? And Sophia's like, get off my jock. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm trying to concentrate on the road. I'm about to get road rage. Can we stop with the 20 questions? My God, I'm not Freddie Mellencamp, please. I'm trying to drive. No, she's like, I don't know. And Tamara's like, do you feel the pressure of just trying to do something? And Sophia's like, well, yeah. Sophia decided to take a gap year, she lets us know in a talking head, and I was very supportive of it. 
she got really bad anxiety of being out of the house away from me. Is that, I mean, is that really what it is? I don't want to like, so she has really bad anxiety of being out of the house away from me. So Sophia feels like from this talking head, it makes it sound like she wants to be around Tamara all the time. So if we're to take Tamara, what she's saying is gospel, maybe it's like a protective thing of Sophia feels like her mom needs protected all the time. Anyways, uh, Tamara keeps going. And I felt like if anybody needed that time to herself, it was Sophia for the gap year. Anyways, Tamara's like, stop. Oh my God. And Sophia's like, God, dude, God. And she's like, I need a break. So the driving going a okay, but we cut from that driving scene and we'll come back to it in a second. And we are now at uh, Katie Janela's house and her daughter's with her and she's filling out paperwork for her name change for, you know, like, and she's like, what are you changing your name to? And it's like, um, you know, Janela, she's, you know, Michelle Janela, Michelle's the middle name. And she's like, oh, you're not changing your middle name. She's like, no, I like my middle name. It's like, it's cute. You know? And then she asked her mom or she says to her mom, she's like, there's a question of the reason why I'm doing this because like, I don't know if I can just like, Oh, I was abandoned by my old family and I'm adopted now kind of. And Katie's like, you're like disassoci disassociating from your biological father. And, and her daughter's like, yeah, exactly. Katie says, when my ex-husband and I separated, Kylie was nine. And a few years later, when my mom was diagnosed with cancer, I felt like my ex-husband wouldn't let one of my sons see my mother. So Kylie sent him a text telling him how selfish he is. And now there's no contact. That's, that's horrible, man. That is brutal and tragic. And all of the things we sometimes think that our parents should, you know, because they're older than us, that they are way more mature and they know how everything should go. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes they are just immature and a lot worse than we are. Anyways, uh, Kaylee's like, where's Padre? And uh, Katie's like, oh, you mean my lover? Matt is at work. And Kaylee's like, how does he feel about this? Does he know we're doing it today? He's like, no, we've talked about it. That will be the best day of my life, he says. And Kaylee goes, oh, wow. And she starts tearing up. And he's like, don't be, don't be upset. It's so cool. And Kaylee's like, I know I'm nervous. And her emotion is so pure, the daughter's, that it's like kind of really beautiful. And Kaylee's like, well, I'm nervous because it's just a lot. And Katie goes, well, Kylie, I think this is like putting a bow on all of the stuff that happened to you in the past. In a talking head, she says her dad doesn't wish her happy birthday. There was no congratulations on graduating high school. I think Kaylee, Kylie changing her name solidifies that she's moving on. So then they get in the car to go file the paperwork. And I'm like, get off the road. Sophia and Tamara are on the road. So they're going to file this paperwork. But at the same time, we do a split screen. And Sophia is still driving with Tamara. Tamara's like, how fast are you going? She's like, 65. Is that not the speed limit, mom? And she's like, I'm just asking. And Sophia's like, I'm not an idiot, mom. And Tamara goes, actually, you're very smart. I don't know how that happened. You got your looks from me. Your brain's from your dad. And Sophia's like, maybe. In a talking head, Tamara lets us know Sophia doesn't have a relationship with her dad right now, with Simon. It was always difficult to get her to go see her dad. You know, we, I mean, think about that. Think, I mean, that is, and you think about sometimes maybe the anger that Tamara exhibits in these scenes. Maybe it's because of scenarios like that, of things that she knows is completely wrong in her life. You know, like the, these kind of failures where she feels as a mom and also the hurt she feels for her kids, you know, having no contact with their dad, two of them, right? Anyways, Tamara's telling Sophia that she's starting to begin to look more like her dad as you get older. You do see Simon a little bit in her. And Sophia immediately goes, I'm not talking to dad. And Tamara goes, all right. In a talking head, Tamara goes, my heart breaks for him. He has two children that don't speak to him and I have one that doesn't speak to me and it's all because of the divorce. So it's difficult. This is my question and this is why I hate that I even have these suspicions, but it's based on behavior that we see on the show. In this, like if you read it on its face and you didn't know Tamara's character from the show, you would think, God, this lady, tragic. And, and, and you know, but at the same time, what a healthy perspective and she really understands things. Do you really think her heart breaks for Simon? I mean, do you really think it breaks? And like, I would be so curious, and I know we're not really should or wanting to use the kids as storylines, even though this is a storyline for Tamara. Like, I would love or be curious about like what the bridges Tamara has tried to create between 
the two kids and Simon, right? And if Simon has ever tried to create that bridge for her daughter to Tamara, like, I do wonder about those things. And I know Simon will never appear on camera ever again. And good for him, you know? I mean, reality shows are really bad for a lot of people. So now we go back in the car with Katie and uh, Kylie. And she's like, hey, listen, I want to talk to you about Tamara's daughter. She's the same age as you. She has the same, like, anxiety about her biological father. She doesn't have a ton of girlfriends in the area. And neither do you. And she's like, yeah, neither do I. And she's like, yeah, we're pretty new here. So we want you girls to meet because you guys have like a lot in common. And Kelly's like, okay. And Katie's like, yeah, you guys will have a lot to talk about. And her daughter's like, oh, that's cool. I want to meet her. I mean, I'm telling you, this daughter, Katie's daughter seems awesome. Like, and I do like the thought of Sophia, who Lydia Dietz kind of like, oh, this bullshit again. Like, you know, like I, I kind of want to see that. I think that's good for both of them. So now they come up to the place where they're going to file paperwork. Um, and this is like a really big moment for her. I thought this was super nice. Um, but isn't that weird? This is what I'm talking about being kind of uneven. We have this very serious conversation about Emily and her being raised. And then a very serious conversation about Katie and her daughter. And I like, wow. And that's before we get to the end of the traitor's insanity. So I guess it's kind of good this episode in a, a lopsided way. But overall, it's just messy. So now all of a sudden, there's a storm brewing in, in Orange County. We hear like dramatic dun, da, 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 da. We see like, you know, trees like waving, rain spitting out. And all of the ladies are preparing for this traitor's night. And Emily's telling Shane, I don't know how to dress Scottish. And Shane goes, well, you look pretty, so that's easy. And she has like, you know, one of those Scottish skirts and a little like beret. She looks really cute. They all look really cute. And, uh, you know, we keep cutting to the rain in Santa Monica. And we go over to Jen Pedrantes and Ryan's like, what is the theme of the party? And she's like, um, Scottish, Scottish is the theme. You know, I'm leaning towards this outfit right here because this feels very holiday and it's another kind of Scottish holiday kind of thing. And she's like, this is Christmassy, you know, maybe I'll just try it on. And I don't know. It's just Ryan and her being cute and dorky. And the last round Robin we have is of Gina with her son. Uh, trying on these boots for the traders night. And she goes, I've got these Keeler Keeler. She's like, I've got, you've got these. <laughs> Sorry. She's like, I got these Keeler. How did she say it? I'm listening to it back. She goes, I got these Keeler boots. I got these. Ke it almost sounds Canadian. I got these Keeler boots. I got, I got these Keeler boots. So everybody is going to be dressed at the uh, dress to the nines. And all of a sudden it's, you know, more raining shots of Orange County. It looks like the worst storm they've had in decades. And we're now in a car, a chauffeured uh, car. And Shannon and Vicky, the OG of the OC, Shannon is going, I met Tamara the other night and it didn't go well. Which, by the way, it did go well. It ended with a hug, and now you're on the way. Like, I'm glad you thought it didn't go well because it looked like you guys completely mended. And Vicky is just on her phone this whole time, and Shannon's kind of like, I said, I feel like I've been climbing out of a hole, Tamara, and you just want to push me back into it. And then Vicky, you know, doing two things at once. She can do two things at once. She's looking down at her phone, and after this kind of emotional uh, revelation from Shannon, she goes, okay, well, if you, you can send me a quote, and also, if you recall why he was rated standard, I can then address that. So it's Vicky. She's got money on the brain. Just fully, fully talking into her phone. And then Shannon's like, tell me when you're done. Okay. So there was a moment where I felt, Vicky, that we were having a conversation that friends would have. I hugged her and it's like, we're good. Can you put your phone down, Vicky? And <laughs> Vicky is just scrolling. And she's like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. I, I can't get your attention, I guess. Vicky is always on. The, hey, she's not full time. She's got to have this other job. So now we're at Tamara's Traders location or whatever. And all of these chauffeured trucks are pulling in with the cast of this version of the Traders. I'm Alan coming with the Traders. Yes. All of these ladies actually look fantastic. They all understood the assignments. You know, it's great. Tamara says she's playing the game. You know, hopefully this time Tamara will win. Um, who knows? 
Camera says in a talking head, unfortunately, my experience on the traders was too short, but I was on it. No. So I want to have a trader's experience for all the girls and maybe for me to relive it a little bit. So all the girls are in line and you see, you know, they're beautiful outfits and they're like, okay, so we're just missing Vicky and Shannon. And then at this point, Vicky and Shannon walk up and I will say Vicky's the only one that didn't understand the assignment. Like she's in like, you know, like a, a business that looks like she just, she just came from Kodo insurance, you know? And Gina's like, Vicky still looks like she's going to a business meeting. And Emma's like, yeah, she's going to sell some insurance. Yeah. She's going to sell some insurance to you guys. Anyways, Vicky's like, Hey, what's going on? And Katie, this is the, you know, K K Katie being around Vicky. She's new. Um, Tamara and a talking head says, Vicky and I are not in a bad place. In a talking head, Vicky says, well, actually, I'm really surprised that I got an invite. You know, back to Tamara's talking head goes, hey, I thought it would be fun for Vicky. And I, I really thought it would make Shannon feel a little bit more comfortable. Oh, what a heart of gold. What a, what an amazing friend. Somebody that's really thinking five steps ahead. Amazing. Okay, so they're in this line, you guys. And Vicky's like, what are we doing? And Emily's like, we don't know. And, and Vicky goes, ha, ha. Tamara's like, this is normal. We all get out of the SUVs on traders. Then we line up and we wait for the host of our show, you know? And then we hear thunder rolling and we see these leather boots with a cane and the cane slaps on the ground. And I'm like, oh my God, who could it be? What, do, they, do they get somebody good? Like, I mean, is John Stamos going to do this? Like, who are, who are we getting potentially to be the host? Because Alan Cumming, I mean, that's a... That's a tall order to fill. I mean, Alan Cumming, just an amazing host of the traders. So they've got to get somebody really, really good, right? So we we follow these boots out into the courtyard where all these ladies are, are there. And Vicky's like, I, I'm starting to feel raindrops. Oh, I'm going to have one frizz ball in my, in my hair. I, I need to borrow your hat, all of y'all. And we see the host coming around the foliage. And they're like, who is that? And then we see the cane, the boots. And everybody's like, I don't know who that is. We are thunder rumbling. And then we cut to commercial. And I'm like, oh my God, who is it? Everybody just said they don't know who it is. Who could it possibly be? And then we realize it's Freddie. Womp, womp. All right. The daughter of John Mellencamp, Freddie Teddy Mellencamp, the host of the Twats podcast is the host. So this is like, you know, Teddy, this is a big deal for Teddy. She's back on the TV. Uh, she's got, you know, she's back there. I love that the girls are like, I don't know who that is. And then Teddy appeared and they're like, I still don't know who that is. Who is that? And Tamara's like, oh, okay. And Emily's like, oh, it's my podcast partner. Because I guess Emily does a podcast with Freddie um, on the Twats network. So they're all kind of laughing as Teddy's like taking her sweet time, you know, just kind of pounding the cane on the ground. And she's looking very seriously. Like Teddy, Teddy is taking this very seriously. Like I want to lead with kindness. Um, okay. Yeah. Like obviously Teddy has found her lane, right? Re the podcast is huge. She really, like, you know, what is she like? Teddy, uh, Ted, Ted, Teddy Walters, they call her or whatever. Like, so she's like really successful, right? So at least she's got that. But being the host of the traders in this episode almost painfully reminds you of why it was very awkward even to have her on Beverly Hills, like, you know, on multiple seasons and you still felt you really didn't get to know her, even though she did share a lot of stuff, but you kind of like, I don't know. It's like a weird, like mind washing technique that you just forget. You're like, I don't, what, is she married? What is, what's going on? And you really, I mean, she's just there. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's just there. Like, you know, she was always a utility player. Never, ne you know, you never, she never ran with the ball, right? She was just there. And once again, she's just there. And I think she's really trying to do a character, but some people don't even really have it in them to do a character. So it kind of reads as like, um, like community, like bad community theater in a sense, but at least she's trying, right? So you know, Tamara in a talking head goes, well, I figured that Teddy would be the best host like Alan Cumming. 
like the best host like Alan Cummings. Tamara, what the fuck are you talking about? And then we have a round robin of talking heads where um, where uh, Heather DeBrose like, she's shade. Teddy is shady. And Katie goes, Teddy is stunning. She does look great. She does. I will say she she looks great in her little trainer's outfit. And then Vicky goes, that's Tamara's minion. Ugh. Tamara and her talking head goes, she's not going to disappoint. That's all Teddy does at this point. What are you talking about? What? The distortion reality field is strong. Like, what are you fucking talking about? That's all it is, is disappointment. That's all it is. And Tamara, like, okay, this is the other thought I was thinking is, you know, Teddy obviously takes a lot of heat from the fans and so much so like where it's like a bit now. And I don't even really play into the, I, I don't make memes about Teddy anymore, even though, oh my God, I wanted to make a meme so badly last night where, you know, the old, what you ordered, what you got. And it was like, what you ordered Alan Cummings in the traders, what you got was Freddie in the traders outfit. Uh, but I didn't cause that's growth, but I wanted to, but I didn't, but I sometimes wonder Obviously, they've built this huge podcasting thing, right? But I sometimes wonder, because I know Tamara is very aware of everything. She's she's on the socials all the time, in the comments. She's aware of everything. And I sometimes wonder if Tamara... If Tamara sometimes... I, I'm trying to say... Is, is, you know, Tamara's cognizant of how much people pick on Teddy, I guess. And she kind of likes that. Like, you know, she's like, you know, like she's considered the brilliant one, if that makes sense. You know, or like sometimes that's kind of feels like how it reads of like, oh, she's a great partner because I'm always going to come out on top. I'm the star. And I also wondered, and maybe you guys can tell me to listen to it. Have they ever gotten into a fight? Has Tamara ever thrown her under the bus yet? Or is that only on television that she does that? Um, but there were so many thoughts. And I know Teddy probably will say she never doesn't really care if she's back on the show. And people I respect, like Carlos King says, uh, oh, Teddy should come back to the show. I don't see it that way, but it's great that Teddy has her supporters out there. But like Carlos, you know, he'll always talk about like, what is like the force multiplier? He uses those that that term of like, you know, she she really makes things happen. I've just never seen that. But I will say she's obviously form some really close friendships with like Kyle and like, that's like the true gift itself. Like that's the gift. It's like John Jansen and Alexis. The gift is your love. We don't need to see it on TV. Teddy, you've got so many gifts. You got this great podcast. You got all these great friendships, but we don't need to see you on TV. Even this to me was a reminder. And even those, you know, in a second here, she's going to do a little dig at Vicky, which is like a well-written dig, but it was written and it was performed poorly. I thought, you know, it's like, you just want like, oh man, hit, hit your mark, you know, do it, man. This is your opportunity. And I felt like it was just like, womp, womp. I mean, it just, like I said, this whole game of the traders was so messy and so weird that at one point I was like, are we still playing the game? Like, is this, do we, are, are we supposed to fully care? So Teddy has her little clipboard and she comes in front of the ladies and she goes, welcome. Housewives and Vicky housewives and Vicky. She could have taken a more pause, housewives and Vicky. Like, I mean, she there was a lot of different choices, but she was welcome, housewives and Vicky. And she's like, chin up, housewives and Vicky. And I was like, it's a funny line. And everybody's like, oh, and Vicky, Vicky, there's a shot of her where she's like, what? And then uh, Freddie goes, I am your host, Teddy Mellencamp. And Heather goes, what was that? And Vicky goes, she's a bitch. She's a bitch. Welcome to the thrilling game of traitors. Let the game begin. Thrilling is a choice, right? She goes, you're going to come up. You're going to fill out your questionnaire. And at the end, you will pay. Come join me. And I was like, God, I don't remember the part of the traders on Peacock where they all took time to fill out a questionnaire. I'm like, hey, maybe we don't mention the questionnaire. Maybe we already had the questionnaire done like pre you guys getting here so we can get right into it. But no, we're going to fill out a questionnaire. Gina goes, oh, I have no idea what Teddy just said, but we're going to fill out fill out a paperwork. That's what I heard. Tamara says the host picks the trader and the entire game, you need to figure out who the trader is. There's missions and you can be murdered. It's just a mind fuck game. It, it is what it is. It really is. Okay. So Teddy goes, okay. So right here, you have your surveys, you fill it out. Oh my God. 
did I fall asleep? Where did we get to the end of the episode? I just, I last I can remember, I was hearing Teddy's voice and I just conked out. <laughs> anyway, she's like, you know, fill it out as truthfully as it possibly can be filled out. Some of you, that's going to be hard. Hey, oh, a little Teddy joke. So the ladies are sitting down with their questionnaires. And Shannon asks Vicky, how do you feel about this, Vicky? And and she's like, the last interaction with you and Teddy. And Vicky goes, I have zero to do with Teddy. I mean, she is so disrespectful to me. And we flash back to BravoCon where they're doing the squash the beef game on Watch What Happens Live. And we have, as uh, Teddy had like said in the comments of like, where was Vicky on January 6th? And Vicky on stage is like, why the hell would you ask me where I am on January 6th? I'll tell you where I was. I was at my condo in Puerto Vallarta. And then we have Freddie in the same show going, you were probably just triggered by somebody that actually has cancer. And Andy's like, oh, and that's a Brooks joke. But once again, good lines. But Teddy's delivery is always so flat. You know, it's always so flat. And she's like, oh, I'm giving reads. And I'm like, dude, if you really like you have the lines, you got to work on that read, man. You got the lines. Work on that read. Say it with your whole chest. In a talking head, Vicky goes, Tamara and Teddy are two peas in a tit, 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 tit. I don't know what the fucking their stupid podcast is about. But Teddy can go kiss my ass. I got I I'm with Vicky on this one. <laughs> Let's say Heather uh, filling out her questionnaire goes, is there a large font for old traders? Um, OK, read it to me. And they're like, one question is, who is the best liar? And Heather goes, oh, this is a mean game. It's a mean game. I see where this is going. And Gina's like, this is not going to be good. And Emily's like, no, no. Gina goes, who's the biggest liar is an easy question, you know, and maybe she can answer because Katie is just like lying a lot. What is Katie lying a lot about? The one thing that we have a discrepancy on is the paparazzi. What, what, what else is, I'm so confused. I really do have moments where I'm like, I'm so confused. One of the questions is who is the most judgmental? And they're like, oh, Emily, Emily's the most judgmental. Jen Pedranti says, Jen says, Emily always has a lot to say about me. Always. She called me a squatter. She said, you look like you have money, but we know you don't. I owe everyone in town money, sell my Rolex and pay my bills. I mean, I could go on. I will say that's, you know, those are all mean, but Emily has a little bit of a leg. I mean, she does need to pay the bills. Right. But Jen says it's hurtful. It's just, it's hurtful. And then Teddy goes, ah, and I got to just even the throat clearing. I was like, oh God, oh, ah! I just fart. My God. Let's all go up to the right. She's being very, she's very, very serious. Let's go to the round table so I can pick my trader. Alan Cumming would have been like, let's go to the round table so I can pick my trader. You know, like the vocal inflection, like Freddie, pick it up, man. Tamara goes, who wants to be a trader? And Katie's like, I don't even know what they do. And Tamara goes, you have to murder people. It, you know, and they're like, okay, that's intriguing. So they all take a seat. And Teddy, Teddy's like, once we commence, everyone will put earplugs in and the mask on their face. And then I will walk around and select the traitor. And Shannon already has the face mask on. And Tamara's like, Shannon, Freddy. <laughs> and now Teddy is giving her dramatic walk around the table. And she's like, her cane, you know, she's like hitting it on the ground. Like every time she passes a chair, I'm like, Oh, dramatic. I don't even know what the rhyme or reason here is. It's just kind of annoying. And I, you know, I will say it almost seems like Freddie does need the use of a cane. Like that's I, like that that was believable. I was like, I think she might need it to walk. Anyways, Freddie says, I have picked my trader. And then all of a sudden we see the trader, but it's in like all pixelated, and it's like, where? It, I guess I'm the trader. Let the games begin. And we don't know who that could be. We don't know who the trader is. Freddie goes, you can lift off your masks and take off your earplugs. Freddie, if they have earplugs in, how can they even hear you? And by the way, I was like, good for them putting the earplugs in once you're around. I'm joking, folks. It's silly. So everybody takes off their earplugs and masks. And they're like, and Teddy's like, join me for a cocktail hour in the rain. Now, Heather Debro turns to Tamara and goes, did you notice she did three clicks over on that side of the table near Jen. And Tamara's like, so you think Jen's the traitor? 
And Vicky looks completely confused. She's always in like a state of excitement, confusion, or anger. It's like, oh, oh what? Where? What cocktail? I don't know a cocktail. Where? I don't even know what a cocktail is. What? What a cocktail? So now they pull up to the bar, and they have actually bartenders, but they've written kind of like janky, like dark trader margarita. You know, like everybody's ordering these drinks. I guess there's themed drinks. So uh, they're like, oh, dark trailer, uh, trader margarita. And she's like, what, what else is there? And they're like, there's a hot toddy. There's an espresso martini. And so people are ordering the espresso martinis. And Shannon says, can I have a very weak tequila soda? <laughs> she's like, when you want to keep drinking, but you don't want people to know, you're, but you're like, hey, can I get a, a, a dash, a, just a splash of tequila, just a splash, just to wet my whistle. She's not humming and blowing in a car tonight. She's got a chauffeur. But, you know, she's like, can I have a very weak tequila soda? Uh, Jen says, I think Heather's on to something with Gina in regards to maybe Gina's, um, maybe Gina's a traitor. I will say for me, once I saw Heather turn to Tamara and go, oh, that's weird that that Teddy hit like the cane three times. I was like, that's usually a traitor's move where I was like, I think Heather might be the traitor immediately because Heather seems like she's one of those people that probably researched it before she came and like those kind of like diversion tactics. So my bet was Heather from that line that it was thrown in there a second ago. So now Katie asks Heather, hey, can I pull you for a chat real quick? And Emily's like, stay strong. And Tamara goes, Katie has been murdered. And Tamara, at this like part of the show, just starts screaming every line. Katie has been murdered. <laughs> Emily in a talking head says, I'm happy to see that Heather has acknowledged that Katie exists and breathes the air. And I feel like that's a step in the right direction. It's all about healing, folks. And we flash back to that uh, opening scene where Emily, Heather, and Tamara are at dinner. And Tamara goes, I actually really like uh, Katie and Heather goes, good, you should. Tamara goes, well, I think maybe you should give her another chance. And Heather goes, uh, maybe, <laughs> I will think about it. Emily in the talking head goes, I mean, at least she didn't have security extricate her. So we're moving forward, but baby Heather steps, Emily says. Okay. So we have these two talking and Heather's like, my fake hair is frizzing. And Katie's like, no, it looks good. Looks looks very volume vol voluminous. And Heather goes, Yes, I said I want hair like a romance novel. It would be great at this point if we saw like a camera lens from like 50 yards away and we realized Heather had called the paparazzi for the traders game. Anyways, they're just making small talk about hair. I'm like, oh, it's good. Okay. Heather goes, so, anyways, I'm having an event in Sonoma next week. And Katie's like, oh, cool. It's for this organization called Family Equality. And then we flash back to all of these ladies in a talking, like a, a, a sorry, a jacuzzi. I can't believe these four ladies in a jacuzzi. I can't believe that. And Heather's like, I have these four kids who are all different genders and different sexualities. One of the groups I've been working with is called Fam Family Equality, and I'm going to do this event in Som Sonoma. And I love, like, we had to cut away to a jacuzzi scene just to get with it. I mean, I love what the charity is all about. I love it. And Heather's got such a strong story to tell. But, like, we needed to cut away for 10 seconds to see these ladies in a jacuzzi at some point. Like, the flashbacks are just so wild. Anyways, Heather goes, and in the spirit of inclusivity, I would really like to invite you to join us. And Katie goes, oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Katie never gets above a certain volume. She's like, oh, I appreciate that. Heather and I talking to her goes, I don't really have an interest in being friends with Katie. Let's just be clear. There's no like reconciling here. We were never friends. However, I would never go out of my way to make someone feel left out. Katie goes, I would love to join you. Thank you for inviting me. And I do want to apologize to you for being nosy with my friend, the head of prof paparazzi for the entire California area. And we flash back to Katie telling Shannon going, I have proof. And Shannon going, did Heather DeBro call Paps? And he said, yes. That's all he said was yes. We need more. Katie in the scene goes, it was never meant to. And Heather goes, I don't want to re-litigate it. Everything, honestly. So shuts her down immediately. I don't want to re- And she's like, no, no, no. I want to move on from it. But I want to and Heather goes, it's unimportant. How is it unimportant? It's all you've been, you got to bug up your butt about the popper. How is that unimportant at all? You've made it so important. It's very important. Heather goes, we don't know each other. And I hope you actually get to know me now, this time. 
in a talking head, Katie goes, it is impossible to move forward with Heather when she doesn't let me finish a sentence. Katie, she does an imitation of Heather. I did not call the paparazzi. I swear on my children that day. And Katie goes, get your fucking nails out of my face. I'm like, oh shit, Katie came to play. Woo. Anyways, they cheers to moving forward. We've seen this scene with different people every time. Heather has a lot of these scenes with people moving forward. Have you noticed that? And then Heather goes, Let's go find who this traitor bitch is. And then Katie goes, I really feel you're onto something, uh, Heather, like kind of stoking your ego. And Heather's like, oh, with the tap, tap, tap. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you're onto something. And Heather's like, I'm just saying. <laughs> all the while, I know it's Heather Debro that is the traitor. So the ladies all get back in a group and, you know, everyone's like, oh, everything okay with Katie and Heather? And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, everything's good. And then Katie leans to Jen and goes, I tried to apologize, but she cut me off completely. You know, and Jen's like, right now? And she's like, yeah. And so then Heather and Gina, they get a rain rainbow, uh, <laughs> they get an umbrella, a rain umbrella, <laughs> they get a rain, they get a rainbow umbrella. And Gina's like, you want to go and talk? And Heather's like, I do. And then Vicky screams out and goes, Shannon, can you please have a conversation with me? And Tamara goes, and me. And I'm like, uh oh. Tamara and Vicky are walking under the umbrella and Vicky's like, who do you think is the traitor? And Tamara goes, I think it's you or Emily. Sorry. No, this is Heather. Now talking to Gina goes, who do you think the traitor is? I think it's you or Emily. Heather says, and Gina goes, it's not me. And Heather's like, that's what the traitor would say. Yeah, but it's not. And then it goes, hey, anyway, I talked to Katie and Gina's like, how did it go? Are you Okay. And he goes, yeah, it went fine. Good. Well, it's not about what you say. It's about your actions. And Gina goes, right. So let's see what they are. And she's like, yeah, let's see what they are. Let's see what her reactions are. And then Tamara's like, we're going to eat after our first mission. And I'm like, how is this like a 12 episode trader season? Like what do we eat after our first mission? But classic Vicky and Shannon are already digging into the food. And Vicky's like, don't tell the other people we're eating. Don't, don't. And then Emily uh, saunters up to the bar, orders another espresso martini. Jen orders the same thing. So now it's kind of a scene of all these people getting together to kind of go over their little differences. We just had uh, Katie and Heather. We're about to have Emily and Jen. We're going to have Shannon, Tamara, and Vicky. Emily goes, hey, listen, uh, Jen, I just wanted to tell you for the last however long it was, since I saw you last, I have been soul searching and absolutely just devastated by that night when I yelled at you across the table, completely wrong. And I was like, flashback, here we go. And we do that flashback of the dinner. And Jen's like, I'm not selling my watch. I love my watch. And then Emily goes, you're so fucking stupid. Go fucking sell it and pay back some of your bills. I mean, that really is insane. You're so fucking stupid, like pointing across the table. That's wild. That's espresso martinis talking. I mean, that because Emily is such a kind person. Um, but Emily tells her, I want to take full responsibility. I should have never done that completely out of line. And I'm sorry. And I hope that you can forgive me. See, this is a fucking good apology right here. That is solid apology. But Jen goes, hey, listen, I guess I just want to ask you for a loan. No, she goes, I guess I want to ask you. I feel like you and I keep finding ourselves in this spot, like I'm beneath you. And so for me, I, I feel like, okay, I'm just less than Emily. You value my bank account. And Emily goes, no, 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 not at all. That's 100% incorrect because I grew up with nothing. So I would never judge someone based upon what they have. And I think that you're in a space where you are now because you had so many people take care of you. And she's like, yeah, my whole life. And Emily's like, yeah, now, now you're like, fuck, I have to take care of myself and I don't know how to do that. And Jen's like, yeah, I've never done that. Emily goes, I had the exact opposite. And she's starting to tear up, Emily. She's like, I had nothing growing up. No support. Nobody paid for anything. Nobody stepped up. No safety. I had a lot of traumatizing things happen that I don't like to talk about. So it made me who I am, which is hard and driven, tough. And a lot of times it's very difficult for me to see outside of that. And so I apologize. That's not on you. That's issues that I have with my past. Man, I get so damn proud of these housewives when they're like, like spot on. Like this is exactly how to apologize, how to take responsibility, how to explain to somebody why something that they do triggers them. And Jen goes, Emily, you are someone I look up to. So it's been a big bummer for me. 
And they're talking to Ed. Jen goes, I would like to be more like a woman like Emily that just gets naked in her backyard and gets spray tanned with her husband right now. She's like, I'd like to be more like a woman like Emily. I like being around women that I feel you can grow from. And I feel that way with her. So in the scene, so in the scene, Jen goes, hey, are you a traitor? And Emily goes, no, it's not. It's you. It's you. And then they're like, I'm sorry. And then they hug. And I kind of liked it because I'm a wussy. Emily and I talking to goes, I appreciate that Jen tells me that she admires me. I mean, it makes me feel good, but now I feel like an asshole. Okay. So now here's the big one. We have Tamara, Vicky and Shannon and Tamara's like, did you figure out the car situation? And Shannon's like, yeah, I mean, I chose the breathalyzer. So, and Shannon's like, can you just Uber for six months? And Shannon's like, well, I have been. And Tamara's like, yeah, can't you just continue? And Shannon's like, well, it, it's not ideal. I mean, my dry cleaning has been sitting there since December 31st. You know, I just, I want to take it in. God, imagine all the dry cleaning. <laughs> Anyways, Tamara goes, I'll help you with your dry cleaning. Okay. So now this is movement. This is okay. Are we, are we back to friends? And Vicky pops in and she's like, so this is the first time we're really getting to talk. I believe we had a great show. And Tamara goes, we had an amazing show. And I'm like, oh, we're talking about the Trace Amigas. Because I thought we were on the same page, Vicky says. And then we get a flash on screen of the headline, Tamara Judge broke up the Trace Amigas, and here's the reason why. And Tamara's like, well, the reason is, and Shannon's like, me. And Tamara's like, yeah, me and Shannon had a falling out. And Vicky's like, why? Well, because of her drinking. And I liked one of Alexa's posts. Okay, this is what I'm saying. It's her drinking, but it's also because I liked one of Alexa's posts about her twin 16-year-old birthday. And we see the Instagram of Alexis, you know, doing her Alexis smile. And it says birthday shopping with my newly 16 year old. And, um, you know, and Tamara liked it. And by the way, th why are we just getting this piece of information now? Because yeah, that is hurtful. I mean, I'm sorry. That is hurtful. That's kind of how society works is that when you are really close with somebody like Tamara and Shannon were, that kind of shit hurts. And Tamara knows it hurts. Tamara all of a sudden acts like she's like, it's either you're smart or you're dumb. Like pick which one it is. I think it's that you're smart, but stop acting like you're dumb in certain situations because it just doesn't hold any water. You are so aware of everything. So you are aware of what you're doing because you know it'll hurt Shannon. Truly, that's what it seems like. Anyways, you know, they're, they're talking about this. The Instagram post gets brought up, you know, and Shannon is, <laughs> Shannon's like, well, no, it wasn't about 16 year old birthday. It said, it said about friendships forming. It's fine. Whatever, whatever. And Tamara's like, no, Shannon, I didn't look at the hashtag. I don't know what that means. And the hashtag was friendships forming. And that was about Tamara. And this is what I'm talking about. Tamara saying, I don't, I don't know what hashtags mean. I don't look at the hashtags. I don't know what that means. You know, a hundred percent what that means. This is what I'm talking about. This is it. You are not dumb. Stop being dumb. And then Shannon goes, there were articles all that day of her publicist making a statement on behalf of she and John four days after they met. And this is what I was talking about with the people magazine. Like they were already press releasing all this stuff. And Shannon's like, I was super upset about it. And Tamara goes, but I didn't know that. Tamara, once again, you know your friend Shannon. You do know that she's upset. Come on. Tamara goes, I never thought for a million years Alexis Bellino would be dating John Jansen. I believe her on that one. And Shannon goes, I don't want anything to do with Alexis Bellino. And Tamara goes, she's constantly saying, I don't want to hurt Shannon. Bullshit. We have not. What are you talking about? You are a liar. Lies, 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 lies. Tamara goes, I mean, I am sorry. It's not my fault that John is dating Alexis and they have sex eight times a day. I don't care about that. And now we cut back to outside and Gina is talking to Katie and she's like, Tamara told me that Alexis brought the, fa the fact up that there was some videos. And Katie's like, yeah, I heard. You know, Heather goes, yeah, I heard about this. Are we supposed to tell Shannon? And Heather's like, I don't know. I honestly don't want to be involved. And she's like, but Tamara didn't tell her? Tamara didn't tell Shannon? And Heather goes, no. And Katie goes, the, these videos will ruin her life. In a talking head, Gina goes, I understand that Shannon is 100% responsible for whatever she did on those videos. But my God, the woman has children. And you know that if you release that, it will affect those kids. And that to me is inexcusable. 
loving Gina this season. My God, my heart's filled with love for Gina this season. Gina in the scene goes, it's like a weird space because part of me wanted to be like, oh, I want to tell Shannon she should be aware of this. But at the same time, I don't want it to get worse, you know? Back in the scene, Shannon goes, Tamara, I'm trying to move on with my life. And she's starting to tear up. And it's hard enough to have Alexis thrown in my face. And now, like, Tamara's, like, brushing her hair back. And she's like, I know. And I give you kudos to even be around her. And now Shannon's, like, kind of starting to really cry. She's like, that I owe him $75,000. It's just this. Vicky's like, it's disgusting. And Tamara goes, where do you sit with that now? By the way, Tamara is playing the game of the traders right now. And Shannon, Shannon goes, my attorney made a settlement offer and he said he won't take one penny less. And Tamara goes, can I give you some advice? They want you to clear his name. And Shannon goes, not going to happen. I'm going to tell the truth. Well, clear his name in what? What are we clearing his name from? I'm so confused. I know you guys are smarter than me, so please explain it to me like I'm Ryan. Please. What are we clearing his name from? I'm so like, <laughs> that he was a gentle lover? Like, what are we clearing his name? I'm so confused. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm so, w clear his name of what? That, like, you uh, is it about the money? Like, you did owe him the money? Is that clearing his name? But uh, I'm just still so aghast at Tamara just playing both sides and the Alexis. Oh, she just, all she mentions is not wanting to hurt you. It's like, wait till Shannon sees this scene of you and Big Bear where you're all laughing and all that. That's not, that's not what we've been seeing. Maybe that wound up on the cutting room floor, but no. Tamara and I talking, I was, it's very difficult for me to be stuck in the middle of this. You want to be stuck in the middle of this. I know that these videos could be quite damaging to Shannon. I bet Tamara's seen them. I bet she's seen them. And as much as I want to tell her, I just don't think that I should. I shall save that for next week's episode. Come on, she'll use it at some point. We know that. And Shannon goes, I'm not going to fucking lie. I'm not going to start lying right now in my life. I'm not going to do it. And Tamara goes, no, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just saying, I feel like Shannon goes, Shannon goes I'm not going to lie. And now we're in like full whatever happened to baby Jane territory. And Vicky's like, you have nothing to apologize to. And Shannon keeps going, I'm not going to lie. Vicky goes, Shannon, you have nothing to apologize to John at all. And Shannon's like, I just don't want to think about him. I don't want to talk about him. But do you, And Tamara goes, but do you understand where we are? We talked about Trace Amigas, and now we've transitioned to John and Alexis. Am I going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Didn't Tamara bring up the John in this conversation? Tamara's like, I don't want to. And then Vicky goes, I want to go back to Trace Amigas. <laughs> Vicky. I'm tired of Kodo. I want to go back to Trace Amigas. I'm a born stage performer. And Vicky goes, there is no replacement for Tamara. There's no replacement for Vicky. There's no replacement for Shannon. We would love it the Trace Amigas back in action again. And then Tamara goes, can I get a hug? Like doing the Carl Radke, can I get a hug? What's everybody in like, can I get a hug? Like that's like, can I get a hug? Can I get a hug? I, it's, it's so bizarre. And I will say after watching the scene where I was like, in real life, it's good that all of these people aren't friends anymore. It's good that Shannon stays as far away from Tamara as possible. And it's really good for Tamara to stay away from Shannon as well, because they really, truly bring out the worst in each other. And I think you, you got to let Tamara go off there and be your own island. She's going to be fine. She's going to survive in any situation. And eventually it's going to catch up to her. But it brings out the worst in Shannon to be around Tamara. Because Tamara needles with really horrible things that Shannon doesn't want to think about. Or she's already thought about so much that she wants to like cut loose. And Tamara's like collecting information. She's playing both sides. And so it's a really toxic relationship. And you feel it immediately. Because I have not missed their friendship up to this point. I just haven't. I thought I've been actually surprised because I thought I would. And then Shannon kind of blew me away because she's handled this so well, um, especially the Alexis stuff. Because to me, that was like the deal breaker. Final straw. Anyways, they all come in for a big hug, a big sister out of the traveling pants hug. And Vicky goes, you just make me so mad sometimes. And Tamara goes, listen, we're all very stubborn, hard-headed girls. In a talking head, Tamara goes, I get pulled in by these two all the time, and it's always a disappointment. Oh, fuck off. I get I get pulled in, always a disappointment. You, uh, Tamara, in so many ways, and you know this, you are the leader. And you know that. You get pulled in in so many ways. Ugh. Tamara goes, but we don't have to talk about the past. We can kind of slowly move forward. 
And the producer goes, do you want to rejoin the Trace Amigas show? And Tamara goes, no, thank you. This is what I'm talking about. Like she even knows it in this moment, but she's acting to those ladies of like, yeah, yeah. I mean, Tamara does her dirty work behind their backs or on a talking head. Anyways, Tamara's like, we need to start this fucking game, okay? And then Shannon goes, can we do the dance? And I'm like, uh-oh. And they do the Trace Amigas dance. Uh, 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 ooh. Oh, all is healed for this episode. We come back from commercial and the Trace Amigas have reunited and they're walking out. And Gina's like, are the Trace Amigas reunited? Ooh, look. And I was like, yeah, they're going to perform tonight. Nobody really seems to care. What is the general consensus? And I will tell you, I I, am, I will go see Shannon and Vicky live just be, because I, fuck, I want them to succeed. Like, yeah, fine. You lose out on Trace Amigas. I'll go support Shannon and Vicky. Hell yeah. Heather goes, oh, by the way, one of you is definitely the traitor because hell is frozen over because you're back together. <laughs> and I was like, are you performing later? And they're like, let's play. What do we do? Yeah, exactly. What do we fucking do? We're playing a game. I'm so confused. And Kenny's like, where, what are we doing? What's the, and then here we go. Freddie's back. The ominous Freddie with the cane. He's like, all right, I'm going to separate you into groups. Team one will be Heather, Katie, and Gina. Team two is Vicky, Tamara, and Emily. And team three is Jen and Shannon. Am I doing good? Um, they're like, we're broken up into twos. And then Tamara's like, we're broken up into twos. And Teddy's like, well, because it's not even numbers, it'll be three, three, two. And, and, and Gina goes, that's my custody schedule, which is a hysterical line. And Tamara's like, mine too. <laughs> So now they're all on a team. And Teddy's like, now I'm going to read out the questions. And Tamara's like, oh, the surveys? Tamara is lit. Teddy goes, whatever team has the highest score. You know, she's like, for the guesses, we'll get immunity. If you get immunity, you cannot be murdered in this round. Gripping. And Gina's like, it's so intricate. The rules of the traitors. By the way, the whole entire cast of Real Housewives of Orange County has probably been turned off of the traitors at this point. Like, if they ever get an offer to do it, they'll be like, no, it was so boring when we did it on the show. Teddy goes, who do you think the group is that thinks is the most defensive? And so Shannon and Jen are like, oh, it's Heather. And then Jen goes, no, I think it's you, Shannon. I think it's you. And Shannon's like, okay. Like, classy lady. She's done fine. She's like, okay. And, to, you know, Freddie's like, uh, Jen and Shannon's group, who do you think? And they're like, Shannon. <laughs> Shannon goes, Shannon. And Gina's group says, we think Heather. And Tamara's group thinks Heather as well. And then uh, Freddie goes, the most offensive is Shannon. And Shannon's like, woo! I've never, I've never heard somebody so happy to be the right answer on a negative question. And they're all celebrating. They got it right. They get the point. In a talking head, Shannon goes, I am defensive. Just keep slinging it at me and I will defend. Bing, bing. The next question is, who is the first to throw someone under the bus? And Jen immediately goes, Tamara. And Tamara goes, they're going with Tamara. So let's say Tamara. So Gina goes, we're going to go with Katie. And it turns out Tamara is the first to throw somebody under the bus. This is how your peers think about you. Now, the next question is, who drinks the most? <laughs> and Jen literally turns to Shannon and goes, we're going with you. We're going with you. And at this point we see Vicky and she's like aggressively drinking her drink. And uh, it was, it was Shannon and Gina, you know, Freddie's like, Oh, that was smart because now you have three points. And Shannon's like, yes. And now the question is who is the biggest traitor? And everybody's looking around, but everybody already knows it's Tamara. Like everybody, like everybody's, and and then they do a talking head uh, producer asking each of the ladies, who do you think is the biggest trader? And everybody's like, Tamara, 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 Tamara. And then Shannon goes, Tamara would rank pretty high. And everybody says, we're going to say Sam, we're going to say Tamara. Everybody says Tamara. And the answer is Tamara. And Tamara's like, oh, yay. But that's it. You are a trader. You are. Anyways. And it, congratulations. And Tamara's like, ah, and she goes, I'm the truth teller. So if you don't like what I have to say, then I guess I'm a traitor. Okay. So Freddie's like, so you two are immune. Everyone's putting on their mask. And on the count of three, the traitor's going to lift up their mask and then point to somebody to be murdered. I'm like, oh, damn. You cannot pick Jen or Shannon. 
And she's like, no, if you are murdered, Freddie says, you will have to continue playing, but there will be consequences. And she's like, like you're dead? And then, you know, Freddie's like, unless you want to end up in the pool. Okay. <laughs> so now they put all their blindfolds on. One, two, three. And everybody's like, oh, it's got to be Gina. It's got, they're like kind of going around. And then Freddie's like, the traitor has made, I'm so confused at this. The traitor has made their decision. And Freddie's walking around with the cane thing again. And like kind of, I don't know, bending over and then goes to Tamara and Freddie goes, you're dead, bitch. And everybody's like, oh, and Tamara's like, who, what motherfucker murdered me? And everybody's like, not me. And Jen's like, not I said the fly. Who in this group wants to murder me? Everybody. And at this point, the editors do a good job of a Tamara troll. Where from last season, she's yelling at Jen going, leave your boyfriend, you fucking bitch. And then one where she's talking to Heather in another scene going, you are a fake friend. And then another one where Tamara goes, you're a liar. You're a fucking liar. And that boat scene in the first episode of last season. And Shannon goes, who talks this way? And then a scene of Tamara talking to Heather going, Katie says you call the paparazzi on yourself all the time. And then a scene in Night Vision where Tamara is getting an inch away from Vicky's face and going, fuck you. Oh, you forget about how many horrible moments Tamara has had on this show. Like she truly seems to have the shortest fuse for somebody that I think is kind of smart. Anyways, somebody goes, Shannon, are you the traitor? And Shannon very calmly goes, I don't know. I don't know. And Tamara goes, I thought we were on good terms, Shannon. I'm telling you, look at Tamara in this scene. She is lit. Shannon goes, I am not the trainer. And Vicky's like, that was before our conversation, Tamara. And then we have the trainer and the pixelated voice altering thing. And it goes like, what the hell, Teddy? That is not who I pointed to. I pointed at Vicky to be murdered. So they got it wrong. And now at this point, Freddy brings like a, like a cardboard box. And Jen's like, what's in the box? And Freddy's like, inside of this box, is somebody who is going to be murdered. So I guess there's names, but there's also like crickets in the box. So Freddie's like, you're going to pull out a little card. And Vicky goes, there's an animal in that box. Don't put your hand in there. And Katie puts her hand in there and goes, here we go. It's, it's a cricket. It's a cricket. And Katie's safe, I guess. And then they're passing the box around. Um, Gina pulls out a cricket and screams like, it's a cricket. My real estate career. Ah. I don't know. She's like, we didn't think there was anything in there except cards. And Vicky's like, you went through childbirth. Pull it out. And she's like, I got the fucking drugs in childbirth. And her talking to her, she's like, this is literally my nightmare. I wish I got murdered. I don't know. So now they're all very scared of the cricket. So that's a big thing. It's a lot of screeching, a lot of yelling. Teddy's not keeping this going. Just everybody's just screaming. It's just, it's mayhem. Um, and now like Emily has just like a boatload of crickets in her hand. Emily, of course, doesn't care. She's like, I fucking do crickets, whatever. And Shannon, by the way, is run over like and hiding behind a pole. And Shannon's like, crickets are a sign of good luck, but I don't need them crawling all over my hands. No, 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 no. And Emily goes, I'm from Ohio. This is normal. There's a cricket on there's a cricket on Tamara's lip. That uh anyways. So Freddie goes, okay, guys, first we have to murder somebody else. It's like, oh, tension, tension. And Heather goes, there's another murder. You know there is Heather. Heather and the or the the traitor and the talking head pixelated thing goes, I never would have killed Tamara first. Tamara was my best decoy. I, the only way to cover my tracks is to con create confusion. And so we see like misdirect happening and Freddie like telling the traitor that she has to create some misdirect. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. So Freddie goes, even though she was immune the first round, there has been another murder. They're like, who's murdered? Oh, who's murdered? What's, what's going on? And Shannon just keeps screaming, I'm immune! I'm immune! And then Katie goes, by the way, it's immune, not immune. 
Freddie goes, you were only immune in the first round. And Tamara screams out, how did Shannon die? And then in the talking head pixelated thing, he goes, who's better to create confusion? Ah. And then Shannon does her infamous read between the lines. It's a middle finger. Traitor, read between the lines. Shannon says, I don't really understand this game, but I've been murdered. I got crickets everywhere and it's cold and I got a very weak tequila soda. Freddie goes, we need to know who was murdered so we can continue on. And Jen's like, Teddy, are we opening these papers? What? Is... And she's like, yes, everybody reveal your paper at the same time. And they all open the paper and, and you know, Shannon goes, I'm safe, but I'm dead. And Emily goes, I'm safe as well. Jen's safe. And Vicky just goes, I don't want to play this game anymore. And then Freddie goes, Vicky, you're dead. And she goes, okay, good, good. And then the pixelated trader goes, oh, that worked out. The game of dumb luck. Uh, I don't know. And now Tamara's holding a framed picture of Vicky and she's like, she was my amiga. And then Vicky goes, ha, I know. And Tamara keeps going, I loved her more than anything ever. And Vicky goes, yeah, I know. And Tamara goes, but sorry, you're dead and throws down the photo. And Shannon goes, I didn't get a eulogy, but that's okay. And then Tamara screams out, the trace amigas are dead. I'm so sorry for all the screeching. I'm just trying to do a no. I'm just trying to reenact you guys. I can understand it's grading, just like when I watch this. And so now we have a funny little editor thing where it says in memoriam, the, tr the trace amigas. And it's like, if I die, I want to die with you. And we just see all the girls like, you know, Tamara, <laughs> Tamara, Vicky and Shannon tripping all over each other while they're drinking. Anyways, now there's going to be this challenge where they have a boat and Teddy's like, you're going to try to get the boat to the other side. Whatever team wins is immune. And then the traitor will do their final murder. I'm so checked out of this game. They're checked out of this game as well. So Freddie's like, to the boat. And Katie's like, it's pouring, but okay. So they put their boats in the water. And then Freddie, just telegraphing so deeply, goes, the good news for Tamara is that she's dead. And Freddie pushes Tamara directly in the pool. Now, this is the fakest setup I've ever seen in my life for a bunch of reasons. Roll the tapes. This is like JFK's The Pruder film. First off, Tamara's not mic'd up, okay? So, you know, the mic is off because they know they're going to do this. And Tamara's like, oh, it'd be great if you pushed me in. Da, da, da. And by the way, when Freddie is going there, you can tell she's like watching the steps and you can tell Tamara's kind of lightly planning on it. And when she gets the shove from Freddie, Tamara immediately plugs her nose, like immediately plugs her nose. So this is so staged. Like, I don't think the other ladies know, but like Freddie and Tamara completely know. So ridiculous. And all the girls are like, oh my God, oh my God, she's in the water. Oh my God, Tamara's in the water. And then Freddie's like, it's a game about trust. And Emily's like, no, I'm not staying anywhere near that water then. And Tamara's crawling out. We see her ass crack. Like they literally have to pixelate her butthole because it's like, she's just like spread eagle. And Shannon goes, I, I'm on antibiotics right now. So I can't, I, you know. <laughs> Heather's like, are you okay? Um, uh, 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 Tamara, did you hurt yourself? And she's like, I'm good. I'm good. And they're talking to Tamara goes, the real traitor tonight is Teddy bitch womp womp and then Tamara's doing her like she's kind of trying to be Lucy as well like I'm wet and Tamara's like Teddy just knows how to ruin everything she can ruin a wet dream anyways Katie and Emily go we're skipping the boats we're done with boats and now Tamara's like <laughs> anyways they're drying Tamara off and and some of the girls are like we're leaving and Freddie's like no this is my only opportunity to be on camera this year We've got to deliberate. We don't even know who the traitor is. So everybody sits down and Gina's like, Tamara's going to freeze to death. Well, whatever happens, happens, Gina. I mean, we can, we got we to gotta shoot. So now they're sitting around the table. And Freddie goes, all right, you guys, we're back to business. Okay. She stomps her cane down. Everybody's going to vote on who they think is the traitor. Don't show anyone, though. Cover it. And so everybody's voting. It's the opposite of intense, even though they're trying to make it intense. And Freddie's like, we're going to go around the table and we're going to show who we think the traitor is. I mean, this takes all the fun out of the actual traitors, which is like the round table and them accusing each other. And it's like every, it's just, it was such a mess. 
So Gina thinks it's Emily, the traitor. And Shannon goes, kablam! I think it's Emily as well. So Emily, uh, so Gina, Katie, Heather, Shannon all think it's hem, uh, Emily. Tamara thinks it's Heather. Uh, Jen Pedronti thinks it's Emily. And who is that last one? Oh, Emily thinks it's Gina. So they're like, okay, so who was it? And Freddie's like, the only people who write, the only people write at this table are dun, 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 dun. And Freddie goes, Victoria and Tamara. So it was Heather. It was Heather, you guys. And this is like Heather, you can tell, is excited. She's like, I'm going to put this on my IMDb. It's going to be big for me. And you can just, she needed this. She needed this. So then we get a flashback of like all the maneuvers through the night that Heather, you know, Heather made, just mainly the tap, tap, tap. And she's like, I thought it was Heather. And they're talking to Heather. Katie goes, Heather's the traitor. How fitting. She's an amazing liar. Does she act? I have no idea. Oh, and then Katie goes, maybe that was before my time. And then Tamara goes, I knew Heather was the traitor. Traitors. You should give Heather a call because she's a good traitor. Oh, God, I feel like at this point, Tamara's like trying to involve herself in the casting process for traitors. Like feels like the office probably feels a lot of calls from Tamara. Can I help? Can I help? Anyways, you know, they're all like, Heather, you're good. Heather, you're good. And Heather was like, it was a game. Heather and Atagna goes, obviously, I'm the one who's the traitor tonight, but Teddy expressed the most traitorous behavior. I guess the good news is I was so surprised that Teddy murdered the wrong person. And then we have a flashback of Tamara screaming, the traitor amigas are dead. Heather goes, that, one, that my shock in that moment, because Tamara screamed that, was evident for everyone. Freddie says, Heather, because nobody figured it out that you're the traitor. And then Tamara's like, I did, I did. And they're like, you already had died though. Freddie goes, you actually won. And Heather goes, I feel really good about that. And Tamara keeps going, I knew you were the traitor because I know you very well. And Emily goes, add traitor to your IMDb. And Heather goes, I will. And that is the end, folks. And then they showed the mid-season trailer again, which if you haven't, I did a full recap of the mid-season trailer on last Saturday's episode. So go check that out. Uh, listen, this went way too long, just like this episode of Real Housewives of Orange County, but I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for the screeching. We made it. We did it. You're in the weekend. You're on a holiday weekend, but come back on Monday. We'll do a full pop culture roundup with Sophie. We got great guests next week. Tons of good stuff. Come join the Patreon. Be a baddie. Patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good. You got Vanderpump Rules recaps over there. You had a whole conversation with my dad, a Q&A. We did the Patreon live, which you can actually watch, even though you, you, know, you weren't there, but you can still watch it. So there's a lot of stuff happening over there, but I really hope you have the best weekend ever with family and friends and get to recharge and all of that good stuff. So the trace amigos are dead.